Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another episode of History Talk. Fair warning before we start this video though. If dark, serious topics bother you, do not watch this video because this one gets pretty messed up. Still here? You've been warned. So don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but there would be no point. Anyway, I digress. Let's go ahead and get to the actual episode. Today we're going to be talking about someone... A little girl who actually would be older than I am if she was still alive. Named... Originally, Candace Tiara Elmore. But at her... Death date, Candace Elizabeth Newmaker. Now, the reason I feel like, before we actually get to the story behind this, the reason this name is very important is because of a law that the events that I'm going to be explaining that had transpired, it led to said law, the Candace Newmaker law. Ironic in the name. Until the story is explained. Prior to 2000, there was a therapy type called rebirthing. Rebirthing therapy was, for those who don't know, who can't and can't seem to figure it out, it's basically a simulation of, you know, going through the womb of a mother's womb again. And prior to the year of 2000, I think actually it was prior to the year 2001, this was completely legal and allowed. So, for those who don't know and are asking, what does uh, this Candace Newmaker person have anything to do with it? Actually, she has everything to do with it. So, Candace was born as the first name I provided, Candace Tiara Elmore. Her birth parents, now the reason she became Candace Newmaker is because her birth parents did not take care of her or her, I believe it was two siblings, at least one. So they were all put through the system. And given, I believe, six years, Jean Newmaker decided to adopt Candace. For whatever reason, Jean constantly kept saying that Candace was violent, irrational. Uh, Jean Newmaker kept saying that this girl was very psychologically problematic. She said that they've gone to psychologists and she hadn't changed. But here's the weird thing. Outside of Jean, everybody else was saying she was so sweet, she was so kind, she was so loving. Honestly, from what my perspective says, Jean was probably someone who hallucinated a lot. Who had a lot of delusions. But I digress. At a point, at the age of 10, Jean decided it was t about time to take it to another level of serious care. The birthing therapy. It had a different name, but honestly, I can't remember what it is. She went to a therapist who recommended this, and Jean did it. Candace complied, and that is where things went horribly wrong. Candace was put under a heavy amount of blankets, which is how birthing therapy usually, rebirthing therapy usually worked. Uh, and you would try to, like, wriggle out of it. 
with a little bit of weight on you. Yeah, you know, kind of hence the point of the therapeutic session itself. And if it, and if, back then, before it became illegal, if anything went wrong, and the person going through the therapy requested to be helped and to get out, you were required to help. You know, because otherwise you'd be under the circumstance of attempted murder. Which is exactly what these therapists, yes I said therapists, did. There were Jean Newmaker, her boyfriend at the time, the, therap the therapist, and two other women. If I'm wrong, there was at least one other woman, if not two, outside of Jean and the therapist. As Candace was going through this therapy, part of it was to have these women sit on her. Over 700 pounds of weight. How Candace was even able to hold together at all with even just a few seconds is beyond me. I know how I couldn't, and I'm pretty sure based off the records that I saw, while kind of going through all of this, Candace was much, much, much lighter and fragile than I ever was, even before the age of 10. And yet, somehow she was able to persist for at least five to ten minutes. That's when things started to go awry. Even worse than they already were. At this point in time, about five, ten minutes into the therapy, if that's what you want to call it, Candace started saying she couldn't breathe. But did Jean the therapist or any of the other women get off? No. All they did was tell her to keep trying. To get out. And that they're not getting up until she has gotten out. 30 minutes in, short of breath, really started to kick in. How? Candace survived for 30 minutes with, like, no breath. I have no idea. But she started throwing up at this point. Her face turning blue. 70 minutes go in, and these, the therapist, the other women, and Jean finally get up because the therapist was basically saying, I don't remember the exact wording, but she was saying, that they might as well check on her. And as they lift the blankets, they see the dead corpse of the 10 year old girl. Puke everywhere. And I believe it's the therapist who said this, but <sighs> basically, the th if it was the therapist, then yeah. But one, at least one of the women was going, just look at her pretending to sleep and just eating all of her puke or something like that. Again, I don't have the exact records in, because this is on record. Has been for the past 11 years, 10 years now, 20, no. Has been on record for the past 20 years now. And, well, this was back in 2000. So as of this recording, 20 years, yeah. But the reason I say 20 years is it wasn't until 2001 where 
These women were put on trial for what they did to this poor girl. Not only were the women put on trial, though, but after the circumstances that had happened, there was a law put out called the Candace Newmaker Law. It basically claimed that rebirthing therapy was no longer allowed at all. Anybody tried, they'd be put under arrest for it. For how much time, I cannot remember either. I don't, actually, that one I don't think I ever looked up. Now, as our uh, videos have gone so far, time for me to answer the question of how does this impact me? Well, maybe it doesn't impact my personal life. But in a way, the thing that bothers me and why I feel like I get impacted by it is that First off, a detail I left out while telling that story is that when the women went on trial, most of them just got a smack to the back of the hand. And I'm like, really? That's it? A couple of them got prison, the other ones didn't. That's the thing. None of them, all of them, no, well, sorry, rephrase, all of them deserved the same sentence. Only half of them got it. Now to reiterate, how does this impact me? Well, I've gone through a lot of medical things. I've taken medical related classes in my entirety of my life. I've gone through medical circumstances. In a way, I feel for some reason, I feel inclined to feel remorse for Candace's siblings. Michael was the name of the brother, at least. That one was way more noted than the others. If there are others, I, again, I can't remember. But I do believe there were, so just in case, yeah. I feel remorse for all. I, I feel bad for anybody who has to have God see, see a child go through something like that. As somebody who really does love children, to see a ten to find out that a ten year old girl was killed by her own mother, it's people like Gene Newmaker why this stereotype of evil stepmothers exist. Yes, technically Jean, Jean Newmaker wasn't a stepmother, she was an adopted mother, but both are looked the same way stereotypically. It's people like her the reason why. Some people get lucky enough to have the opposite. But for me, it's more just thinking about it that makes me it makes me sick, physically sick, just trying to, like, I can literally feel my stomach churning right now. I don't know, maybe it's the soda I had to keep myself up, um, energetic enough to think about this beforehand that's causing that. I don't know, but regardless, so far I haven't exactly directly said a reason why this impacts me. Aside from what I literally just said, this makes me physically sick. To imagine a parent giving so little care to a child Yesterday I was talking so, the day prior to this upload, the day to this upload, um, I was talking about how this is basically how a Karen acts, except to an extreme extent, what the world calls Karens nowadays. Um, if that's still 
the hip thing to say. I don't know. I still hear a lot of people say it, so I assume as much. But... As I consider that kind of stuff... If this really was the case about even this individual, Jean... She's the worst of them all. All the Karens that you could possibly list, she would be the worst one. And per in my personal life, I've met people like that. People who don't give a crap. They'll act like they do. Like this woman, Jean Newmaker, she adopted Candace acting like she cared, but then, like the many, many stereotypes put out there, it, it, it's like she was the personification of the stereotype itself. She didn't care about them, and I've seen so many adults who just don't give a crap about children to the point where it's like it literally actually does physically make me sick to think about, talk about, or see this kind of thing happen. The, again, the only reason I'm not like throwing up or anything right now is just because I've I, I took some precautions. That way I knew I, I, it wouldn't happen. I guess in a way that's kind of how it impacts me today. In a way, I've come across pe as I've said, I come across people who are like this, and I would throw, throw that kind of thing at them, and they would just freeze, completely change, at least for the time that they were in the moment, if not permanently. If you treat a child like this, you don't deserve the child. A child is a gift, not an item. However, that's a topic for a different day. Maybe. It could fit into what we're talking about now. In fact, might as well. There are so many kids out there that I've, who have turned into teenagers and I've met as teenagers or young adults who act completely different than other people I've met, who, for the sole reason that, as a child, they were not treated properly. Quite the opposite, they were treated like crap. Makes me feel bad, and it, as I said, it makes me sick. It makes me physically sick to think about or see something like that happen. Anytime I have, as I said before, I would throw the whole Candace Newmaker Law situation at them. If they continued, honestly, this has never happened, but if I ever saw somebody continue on after that, they wouldn't like the outcome. I'm just going to leave it at that. People who know me know that there are certain limits I won't go to, but there are certain other limits that I would. And if I needed to, I would with these kind of people. But before I actually do end up getting sick because of talking about this stuff, I'm going to leave this here. How many of you actually, I'm very curious, I've talked to several about this kind of thing. How many of you actually knew about the Candace Newmaker Law? I'm very curious. Apparently not many people did know. If you guys have a suggestion for um, any other historical topics that you, or topics, people, groups, whatever it is that you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas for different history talk subjects. This one today was actually recommended um, by a coworker of mine.
regardless. If you guys want to check out any of the other History Talks episodes, uh, click link on the side of my head and that'll be there. If that's not quite what you're looking for, uh, try clicking the other icon on the other side where YouTube will give you an idea of something that might suit your fancy a bit better. If neither really are floating your boat, you want to make see if anything on the channel itself um, will cross your eye, why not check that out? Link right here. But in the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of History Talk, everyone. And I hope to see all of you in another. See you guys later.